Energizing your soul through the inspired Word of God. This is your daily devotional reading. Our Daily Bread July 30th Thou art the Christ. Upon that cross of Jesus, mine eyes at times can see the very dying form of one who suffered there for me. And from my stricken heart with tears to wonders I confess the wonders of redeeming love and my unworthiness. Thou art the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Matthew chapter 16 verse 21. Hitherto he had refrained from making known to them anything relative to his sufferings and death. In his conversation with Nicodemus he said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. But the disciples did not hear this, and had they heard, would not have understood. But now they have been with Jesus, listening to his words, beholding his works, until notwithstanding the humility of his surroundings and the opposition of priests and people, they can join in the testimony of Peter. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now the time is come for the veil that hides the future to be withdrawn. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Speechless with grief and amazement, the disciples listened. Christ had accepted Peter's acknowledgement of him as the Son of God, and now his words, pointing to his suffering and death, seemed incomprehensible. Peter could not keep silent. He laid hold upon his master, as if to draw him back from his impending doom, exclaiming, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Peter loved his Lord. But Jesus did not commend him for thus manifesting the desire to shield him from suffering. Peter's words were not such as would be a help and solace to Jesus in the great trial before him. They were not in harmony with God's purpose of grace toward a lost world, nor with the lesson of self-sacrifice that Jesus had come to teach by his own example. Peter did not desire to see the cross in the work of Christ. The impression which his words would make was directly opposed to that which Christ desired to make on the minds of his followers, and the Savior was moved to utter one of the sternest rebukes that ever fell from his lips. Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense to me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Satan was trying to discourage Jesus and turn him from his mission, and Peter, in his blind love, was giving voice to the temptation. The prince of evil was the author of the thought. His instigation was behind that impulsive appeal. In the wilderness, Satan had offered Christ the dominion of the world on condition of forsaking the path of humiliation and sacrifice. Now he was presenting the same temptation to the disciple of Christ. He was seeking to fix Peter's gaze upon the earthly glory that he might not behold the cross to which Jesus desired to turn his eyes. And through Peter, Satan was again pressing the temptation upon Jesus, but the Savior heeded it not. His thought was for his disciple. 
Satan had interposed between Peter and his master that the heart of the disciple might not be touched at the vision of Christ's humiliation for him. The words of Christ were spoken not to Peter, but to the one who was trying to separate him from his Redeemer. Get thee behind me, Satan. No longer interpose between me and my erring servant. Let me come face to face with Peter, that I may reveal to him the mystery of my love. It was to Peter a bitter lesson, and one which he learned but slowly, that the path of Christ on earth lay through agony and humiliation. The disciple shrank from fellowship with his Lord in suffering, but in the heat of the furnace fire he was to learn its blessing. Long afterward, when his active form was bowed with the burden of years and labors, he wrote, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 12 and 13. This passage was taken from the Desire of Ages, pages 415 and 416. Our Daily Bread, July 30th. I encourage you to be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Thank you for listening and be sure to join us tomorrow for your daily devotional reading.